Hey, sisters. If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that I don't believe in quick fixes. I've never really seen them work. They're usually cutting corners and you always pay the piper for them somewhere along the lines. However, being the efficiency junkie that I am, I love discovering tools that can can give you more bang for your buck. This is how I look at my food and my nutrition. This is how I look at my movement and workouts. This is how I look at my sleep, my breath, my pleasure, anything that's giving me energy instead of taking away. And there are definitely tools out there that give more than the average bear. (laughs) One of those tools for me is my morning greens drink. If you follow me on social media, if you see my stories, you know it's a daily part of my routine and has been now for three years. It's a huge part of what helps support my gut health, my hormonal health, my cravings, the stress that we know is inevitable in our body. The greens that I love is from a company called Organifi. It's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I at Organifi.com is their website. They have a lot of amazing supplements there. I love that they're organic. I love that the products that they have are created in a way that your body can get the most out of them. There's a lot of supplements out there where you take them and they are not being properly absorbed in your body. What I love about my greens juice, this is my favorite thing from them, is that it is the most potent thing you can put in your body very first thing in the morning. I mix a scoop of it with some ice and a huge shaker of water and I rehydrate myself. I support with the adaptogens, the stress that is happening in our body and making our hormones worse. Ever since drinking this regularly, I have noticed my cravings are almost gone unless I haven't been sleeping well. My my energy is clear. My brain is clear. My digestive issues are better. It is a simple tool that you can use that packs a punch when it comes to nutrients in your body. So if you are looking for something that is quick, that can support you, that tastes really good, and that you know is providing value to your body, whether you're in major distress or not, this can be a powerful a powerful tool, tool to add to your toolbox. The Organifi Green Juice, and they give 15 to 20% off to all of my listeners. You just need to use Bria as a discount code at checkout for any of their products, but I love the green juice. All right, let's dive into this week's episode. What's up, sisters? Welcome to the Period Whisperer podcast. I'm Bria. I'm your host. If you're new, I'm so happy you are here. I'm your perimenopause and menopause sister, your holistic trainer, hormone specialist, translator of your female body. I'm a recovering people pleaser and hustle addict turned body whisperer and hormone decoder. And I am here to help you de-stress your body, decode what it is saying, become the CEO of it, and own your own health, energy, and weight loss again. This show is for you, the overwhelmed, overworked, underappreciated step woman who dreams of a body they feel strong, energetic, and sane in. The woman who knows that she shouldn't just wave the white aging flag and believes in a body and life of peace, love, and purpose. But you don't just know how to get there yet. So if you are stuck in your body, your energy, your life, you are in the right spot. Let's lean in and learn what our bodies are saying to us. Hey there, sister. I hope that this podcast episode finds you in a place that's ready to change. Maybe you are already changing. Maybe you've been implementing things in here. Maybe you are in my posse, or maybe you have reached out already, or maybe you've been watching from the sidelines. Either way, I thought I'd take a different approach today. And even though I know I'm here sharing a lot of things on on social media and in my emails and here on the podcast, I know that I can always go deeper. I can reach you from a deeper point. And I, I know that in all the years that I have connected with people, because it's one of my favorite things is feeling connected to someone else, that when I've really needed help the most, 
it's meant a lot to me to ask, seek help from someone who understands where I'm coming from. For me, that always feels like they know exactly how I feel. And if they were able to get themselves out of that, if they were able to move themselves to the next level, if there's somewhere I want to be going and they understand where I am, that they're, they're the right person for me to connect with. So I thought today I would take this time and vulnerably share a journal entry with you from when I was in the depths of my hormonal chaos um, a few years ago now. So I'll take you way back <laughs> to uh, 2019. And you know, it's funny because when I was young, one of the things that brought me so much pleasure and one of my sort of emotional outlets was writing. I always wrote, I have, I still have so many journals that I wrote like cover to cover and wrote entries in. I wrote poetry and I wrote short stories and my favorite classes in high school were the creative writing ones. I loved reading and writing. And when things got hard in life, when I started losing myself a little, I lost that part of myself. I think that maybe I didn't trust what was going to come out on the page. And maybe I started listening to everyone else outside of me instead of inside of me. So when I was beginning my journey to try to figure out what, what was really happening, why I felt like I was losing myself and feeling sad, I started journaling again. And so today I'm going to read you a journal entry and I'll share, hopefully it'll give you some insight into how I was feeling at that time. And, uh, and then I can walk you through how I got out of it. And, and hopefully that'll give you some, if it connects with you, if it resonates with you, or maybe it resonates with someone else, maybe you'll begin to understand where I was because you see it in you. And maybe you'll start to recognize in you that you can get to the other side of it. Okay, so deep breaths here. Here we go. I'm drowning in an ocean of frustration and despair. It feels as if the waves of hopelessness are crashing over me, dragging me under, as I struggle to keep my head above water. I can't remember the last time I felt like myself. I keep asking, where have I gone? Will I ever find my way back? Perimenopause has been like a thief in the night, stealing away the woman I once knew, the woman who was full of energy, who loved to dance in the kitchen, who felt confident in her own skin. Now the mirror reflects a stranger, a tired and defeated version of who I used to be. And I'm terrified, terrified that I'll never be able to escape this body that feels like a prison, terrified that I'll never feel like myself again, and that this is what I have to look forward to as I age. A mask that I put on every single day, pretending to be happier than I actually am. The weight gain has been relentless. I've tried everything to lose it. And this is what I do for a living, diets, exercise, supplements, you name it, but nothing the, it seems to work the way it once did. It's as if I'm trapped in this ever expanding shell, unable to break free. Every time I look in the mirror, I feel a crushing sense of disappointment. Clothes that used to fit like a dream now taunt me from the depths of my closet. A, a reminder of the person I used to be. I've always been active, but the fatigue has stolen my love for movement. The simple act of getting out of bed in the morning feels like a Herculean task. I can't remember the last time I felt truly rested. Even a full night's sleep seems to do nothing to recharge my batteries. I'm so exhausted, but I'm too stubborn to give up. I keep pushing myself, hoping that maybe, just maybe, my body will remember how it used to feel. It's not just the physical toll that perimenopause has taken on me. It's the emotional one as well. I feel like an emotional roller coaster with peaks of anxiety and plunges into despair. Some days it feels like I'm being held hostage by my own mind. My thoughts spiral out of control, convincing me that I'll never be the vibrant, happy woman I once was. The tears come easily for the first time in a long time, and I feel powerless to stop them. And then there's the isolation. I've always been social, but lately I can't muster up the energy to go out and see friends. I'm too self-conscious about the way I look, too tired to engage in conversation. I watch as my friendships drift further and further away like a balloon slipping from my grasp. And I can't help but feel abandoned and alone. I've tried to talk to my spouse about it, about what I'm going through, but I'm not sure he truly understands. I think that he must miss the person I used to be 
but I'm not sure that that was even who I was either. I'm not sure if that was the mask or if that was the real me. I've been doing my research, trying to find a solution, something to help me feel like myself again. But the more I read, the more overwhelmed I become. There's a sea of information out there and I feel like I'm drowning in it. The conflicting advice, the endless list of supplements and treatments, it's all too much. I don't know where to start and I'm scared that I'll never find the answer. As I sit here pouring my heart out onto these pages, I can't help but feel a sense of despair. Is this who I am now? Is this the new normal? Am I just supposed to wave the white aging flag? I can't accept that. I won't. I refuse to let this be who I am. Hmm. So that was from the heart of my depths. And look, we all have good days and bad days. I was raised in by parents who created a very positive lens for me, which I appreciate, you know, for me, it, it becomes a lot easier in life. When you're raised with a positive lens, it's easier for you to see the positive in things. But sometimes I think when you look only to the positive, you sometimes become stuck in this habit of ignoring the truth. And that was certainly part of my story. I spent a lot of years not really looking and really paying attention to the things that were bothering me, just constantly looking and telling myself it's going to be okay. So what I want to share with you today in this unique podcast episode is to remember that everything takes time. When I finally invested in myself and decided to take some actual courses and coursework and get a coach and you know work on the mindset piece around the things that were keeping me stuck, because I think I knew in my heart of hearts and in my gut that I was still making decisions that didn't align with my health. And it was confusing because there was a lot of decisions in there, a lot of habits that were quote unquote healthy that I later learned in the process. And you hear me talking about this through the podcast and in, in social media that I thought were healthy habits, but were not serving me because of the time in my life, because of the shifting in our hormones. But for me, when I invested in myself finally, and I decided to get really honest with the habits I had that I was struggling to give up, habits like sugar, habits like alcohol, habits like caffeine first thing in the morning, habits like falling asleep to TV at night, habits like ignoring what I was really feeling and being a people pleaser. I began to explore what it was like to sit in the uncomfortable without numbing it. And it was in those moments where I began to surface what I'd really been trying to numb and really been hiding from. That's the thing about perimenopause, about midlife. It comes at us, this shifting of hormones, and ultimately it not only highlights the things that haven't been working for us that youth was very forgiving about, but it becomes intolerant of us to continue this way. And I could see a path where I just continued and lost myself, or I could see a path where I did some of the hard things and made the hard decisions and made those changes. And in order to make those changes and in order for me to change how I was eating, change how I was living, change you know how I was making myself feel worthy through my bit of hustle addiction that a lot of us have, I used to get really stuck thinking, you know, I have to do all of these things to feel worthy in a day, right? When I really dug into it, it was like, well, why do I have to do all of these things? And I didn't want to ask for help because when I had asked for help, it hadn't been there and I just took it on myself to do it anyway because I felt the need to have those things done and that's how I made myself feel worthy. I realized I needed to do the mindset work to heal the pieces underneath so that I didn't always seek for something to numb. And when I needed help in that area, I needed to learn different tools, tools like breath work and meditation, tools like yoga, tools like cycle syncing and syncing my hormone rhythm with my activities. I needed to learn different ways, tools like setting boundaries, right? Setting boundaries and vocalizing your needs. I needed to learn different tools. So if you're listening to this podcast episode and anything in my journal entry resonates with you, I want you to first know you're not alone. It doesn't have to be this way. 
And no matter what, we're kind of looking at a place in time where there is some work to be done. But we can look at it like this is going to be hard or, and I'm just getting old and I hate this and it's awful, or we can put a productive lens on it, not just a positive one, but a productive one and say, but now I'm finally ready. My body, mind, and soul is finally ready and strong enough for me to make different decisions in my life and support me into becoming who I wanted to be all along, who I truly am all along. So for you, whether that's just learning to deal with emotions, whether that's recognizing maybe you're not happy in your career and you want to make a shift there, recognizing that maybe the relationship you're in isn't, isn't great, recognizing that maybe you need to have some therapy to process through some trauma, whatever it is that's keeping you stuck and unable to follow the strategies that you know are healthy for you, this is the most perfect time to do that work because your body and your brain are no longer ready and able to dust things under a rug. So if you haven't already, go and download my 10 Laws of Healthy Hormones, which is free. Go back and listen to some more of these episodes or reach out and come and join us in the perimenopause posse or schedule a hormone healing analysis and let me help you create a plan and isolate what's sticking in there for you or go all in and let's connect and see if we make we're a fit for one-on-one coaching or go and find someone who does feel like a fit for you. What matters most is that you know that perimenopause is not a small thing, it's a big thing. That we need to understand it and understand what our bodies are saying to us that it's a, an amazing opportunity for us to make the changes we want to make and that we can't put it off anymore. I think that's the gift of midlife. It knows that we're midway. It knows that we have still another hopefully 40 plus years to go. And it's life's way and our body's way of reminding us to soak it all in, to squeeze it all out, to live it exactly how you've always wanted to live. Okay, sisters, thank you for always being here, for listening for showing up, for your messages. Please message me. I love when you message me. I answer all my DMs myself. Let's go out into the world and be more in our lives and not just less on a scale. And our bodies will follow. I'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for joining me on the Period Whisperer podcast. I want to encourage you to reach out to me directly and message me if there are topics or things you're struggling with so we can address those right where you are at. And of course, if you loved this episode, if you learned something, make sure to share it with your friends and please rate and review it wherever you get your podcasts.